Hello and welcome to the Yak, the wide receiver analysis podcast for week 17, final week of the regular season. I'm Big Italy 42. He's Josh Shepherdson at BeChad50. Of course, here talking about some of your favorite plays. And these first two, um, you're not alone, obviously, in yeah. these, but they have to be mentioned. Antonio Brown, first off, obviously, um, last week, the Ravens, I think it was more so Ben Roethlisberger not playing well than the rest of the team. But um, either way, Ravens showed up in a big way and all but, I won't say all but eliminated, but certainly put a big hit in the Steelers' potential to make the playoffs. So they need a big game this week. They're playing a Cleveland team that, you know, competed last time, I guess you could say. But Antonio Brown is just going to have a big game. The Steelers have to win this game and get some help to win. I mean, it it sincerely could be a chance, a time where we just see the Steelers just beat the hell out of the Browns this week. Yeah, and the nice thing is the NFL was smart enough to put this game in the same time slot as the Jets game. So there's no risk of the Jets winning and the Steelers just mailing it in. I mean, they have to play to win because they're playing at the same time slot as the Jets. So they're as far as I'm concerned, this is a playoff game for the Steelers. And it's they lose, they're done, flat out done. Yeah. They win, at least they have life if the Bills upset the Jets. So... Expect them to come out firing on all cylinders. They had a big game the first time they played the Browns, and that includes Antonio Brown, who uh, erupted for 10 receptions for 139 yards and two touchdowns the first time these guys met, with Big Ben playing quarterback in 11 games this year. Uh, Browns averaging just insane numbers, 13.18 targets, 9.64 receptions, 120.45 receiving yards, and he's caught all of his touchdown passes this year from Big Ben. All of his touchdown passes in his career from Big Ben, technically, but, I mean, Brown's just on another level when Big Ben's under center. So the matchup's great. His numbers this year are great. There's really nothing to point at that that you can dislike with Brown. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a no-brainer cash game play, and a guy you want some exposure in GPPs to. Yep. Um, Julio Jones... Has had a tremendous season. The only thing that's ever hurt him really has been inconsistent play by Matt Ryan. But recently, Matt Ryan playing better. And um, you mentioned all the double-digit target games. And, I mean, Julio Jones, especially on DraftKings with that 100-yard bonus, just has massive upside. And in case you weren't aware, he is facing New Orleans, who, as we know, is the worst defense in all of football. And we're talking historically bad. I mean, knocking on the door of most touchdowns ever given up. Yeah, and it's it's unbelievable. Even when Matt Ryan's played bad this year, Jones has managed to produce. Uh, you mentioned the double-digit target games. He's reached double digits in targets in 13 of 15 games this year. He's caught five or more passes in 14 of 15 games. And uh, he's had 67 receiving yards or more in 13 games. The guy, is his floor is insanely high. He leads the league in receptions, leads the league in receiving yards, and he has no problem finding the end zone either with eight touchdown grabs. Uh, the, the Saints secondary is bad, as you pointed out. Uh, Football Outsiders ranks him 27th defending number one receivers. And, I mean, Jones isn't just a number one receiver. He's in that discussion for number one receiver in all of football. So if they've had trouble defending run-of-the-mill number ones, good luck stopping Julio Jones. I mean, one of his worst lines of the year came facing these guys earlier in the season, and that was six receptions for 93 yards. That's like a floor for Julio Jones this week. And I mean, when do you get a floor like that? So Jones, like Brown, is a must in cash games. I mean, you're going to have to get some punts in there to get both of these guys on rosters, but you need to get them both on your rosters, especially at DraftKings with the, the yardage bonus, with the full point per reception. These guys are must, but they also have such enormous ceilings. you got to get them in some GPPs too. Yeah, I mean, and plus, I mean, if you figure that uh, – I did see something else about how he's he's also closing in a record of uh, most receptions in a season too. So I think he needs like 18 or something like that this week. Um, I don't remember the number, but still, I mean, he's – Still, people over here mad at him for some down performances. Overall, still having one of the best seasons of any player. Yep. Um, a guy who's not having one of the best seasons of any player, but he's finishing strong. Uh, Jordan Matthews from the Eagles facing off against a Giants team that allows more passing yards than anyone. Sam Bradford um, could have had himself a contract extension, but chose not to take it. And now, all of a sudden, he's got to show up late and uh, finish very strong if he wants a chance to get paid this offseason. So, you know that Philly's going to be throwing the ball in a game that no longer matters to either team, but um, you expect that there's going to be plenty of fireworks in this one. Yeah, and Matthews is finishing the season on a high note. Over the last two weeks, he's caught 14 passes 
for 263 yards receiving and a pair of touchdowns, targeted 19 times in those two games, gone over 100 yards in each of those games. And, uh, I mean, as you noted, the Giants allowing more passing yards per game than any other team in the league, nearly 300 yards a game allowed by the Giants, 297.9 per game. So uh, giving up a ton of fantasy scoring to receivers, third most DraftKings points, fifth most FanDuel points per game to receivers this year. Math, couple that with Matthew's strong play down the stretch. And, I mean, what else can you ask for? Soft matchup, uh, hot player, and a nice salary to boot. So uh, a lot to like with Jordan Matthews this weekend. Even though I think um, with the firing Chip Kelly, some people might have more as a GPP-only play with some uncertainty around what the offense will look like this final week. Maybe they run the ball some more. I think he's he's fine to use in cash games as well, especially since you do need some of that salary relief somewhere to be able to pay up for Julio Jones and Antonio Brown. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, next up, Michael Floyd of the Arizona Cardinals. Of course, we've got potential if... If, in the crazy scenario that Panthers lose, um, then Arizona wins, they could still get home field advantage. Obviously, likely to get the two seed anyway, but um, still quite a bit to play for here in this one. But um, unless they flex some games, it's 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock, so you may know their fate uh, prior to this game, which will likely scare some people off of playing people, which is going to just drive ownership down. And um, like you were mentioning before the show, someone's still got to play. You can't just bench everyone. Um, on the, you know, assuming that Carolina wins and they're just locked into that two seed. So you still got to throw passes to someone. So uh, Michael Floyd and his big, big frame definitely in play. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to think that uh, the veteran of the receiving core, Larry Fitzgerald, would be the the prime candidate for getting some reduced snaps if uh, this if this game is for nothing. And uh, obviously Palmer would be in danger of sitting possibly uh, – maybe the second half. I know uh, Bruce Arians has already said he's not going to bench his starters. He didn't say that he's not going to rest his starters, though. So, obviously, if they're not playing for anything, wouldn't expect Palmer to get a full game in. But if they turn to to, uh, Drew Stanton, Floyd is the receiver that I would feel the most comfortable working with Stanton because Stanton isn't the most accurate quarterback, and Floyd's a pretty big target. So, a guy like John Brown, probably going to be drawing Richard Sherman in coverage. Smaller receiver anyway. Not the guy that I want to have out on my rosters if it does turn into Drew Stanton time in that game. At least with Floyd, uh, I feel like there's a little bit more certainty with him being out there. A little bit more, uh, I have a little bit more comfort in him working with, with a less uh, accurate quarterback and obviously if this game is played for something uh, you got to like him even more because all these starters will be out there they will be motivated to go out there and win that one seed and uh, Floyd should continue his recent tear uh, five games besting 100 yards receiving in his last seven one of those two games he failed to reach 100 yards he went for five and 70 so I mean if that's the kind of floor you're looking at for a guy like this uh, that's pretty darn impressive uh, he can find the end zone he can do it all he's a big Yards after the catch guy, so he doesn't necessarily need to get open deep to make a big play. Uh, really good after the catch. So I uh, like Floyd a lot. He already torched the uh, the Seahawks once this year. And uh, Pro Football Focus suggests that he's going to get Deshaun Sheed in coverage. And they have him ranked 104th at the cornerback position. So we're talking about some pretty soft coverage for him. Uh, so overall, I really like Floyd's ceiling, but I also don't think his floor is maybe as low as it is perceived to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. And it's, it's scary to think what they might do if they find out that Carolina slips yep. off in the early game because they're, they'll be definitely coming out firing. Um, a guy who's going to be thrilled to get back on the field and kind of redeem himself, I guess, from uh, hurting some people in fantasy football championships last week, but... <laughs> Um, not me. He didn't kill me that bad, personally. But uh, definitely some other teams you see bad. Uh, obviously, it's hard to fill in for him week 16. So a lot of people irritated with him. But some leagues still have a week 17 for him to come back and redeem himself. But fortunately, we have DFS. And we have a matchup against Philly, who, as we know, not a good secondary. Odell Beckham wanting to finish the season strong, of course. And, I mean, it's going to be tough sledding for Philadelphia to try to slow him down in this one. I mean, we've seen him... Catch short passes, take him to the house. He's a big threat. I mean, the guy can do it all. And uh, with Antonio Brown and Julio Jones getting going to have a lot of ownership, got to imagine he's going to be kind of the odd man out in that trio. Yeah, I, I mean, really, he could have ranked as an elite play, uh, and I think it would be hard for anybody to argue. But I feel like the ownership difference between uh, he and Julio Jones and Antonio Brown makes him more of a GPP play because they're going to get a little bit of edge because he's. I, I'm guessing he's five to ten percent lower owned 
in uh, GPPs than that duo highlighted in the elite section. So you're getting a little bit of edge. You're getting the kind of upside that, that Jones and Brown have. I mean, OBJ's upside matches them. And uh, it's hard to argue with this floor, too, because this, the Eagle secondary is bad. Um, and we're talking about a receiver that's riding a uh, five-game touchdown streak. Uh, even facing Josh Norman wasn't able to stop that streak. Before that, he had strung together, I believe it was six games, besting 100 yards receiving. So, I, I mean, the guy's playing great this year. He's got 25 touchdown receptions and 26 games played in his career. He's averaging a hair under 100 yards receiving per game for his career. He, he's averaging 6.5 receptions per game. I, I mean, the guy can, can do it all. Uh, big yardage, big reception totals, knows for the end zone, and a soft matchup. I mean, the Eagles have allowed the fourth most DraftKings and, and FanDuel points per game to... Uh, receivers this year and they surrendered the third most touchdown grabs to the position this year as well so uh 23 touchdowns given up to receivers this year i'd bank on obj finding the end zone at least once this week yeah and i'm sure once we get those vegas lines to come out on scoring props that he's going to be looking pretty nice as well yeah uh final guy for you here dorial green beckham speaking of big receivers i mean he's one of the bigger ones in all of football here yep. and uh does draw a tough matchup which lets me even just is going to draw his GPP ownership down even lower. And obviously, technically something on the line for Indianapolis here, but, I mean, it's an ultimate long shot. They need just about every other team to win or lose in the right fashion, which is just not going to happen. But um, Doro Green Beckham, though, his final final chance this season to have a big game, and he, he has shown up in a big way a couple times. Yeah, uh, fortunately, one of those times wasn't last week, so recency bias is going to set in, I would say, uh, goose egg last week, which is great. I mean, you and I talked about it before the show. That's the time to hop on a guy. If you like him, you like his matchup, you like his upside, you grab him after a poor game, and you're going to get low ownership because people uh, fall into the recency bias trap. Yep. And uh, before that goose egg, he had posted yard, better than 100 yards receiving two of his last three games. He was closing the season strong, uh, as you noted. Big receiver, six foot five, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. Even if he ends up drawing Vontae Davis for the bulk of this game, he's got five inches and twenty pounds on Vontae Davis. Good luck to him. I mean, he can play perfect coverage, and if the ball is thrown in the air in Doriel Green Beckham's vicinity, good luck getting to it. You just can't get to the football. That's you can't make up for the size discrepancy. And the nice thing is is DGB isn't the type of number one receiver like Julio Jones where you'd expect Vontae Davis to shadow him. So the Titans move him around a little bit. He's going to draw a really terrible cornerback in coverage. Colts have given up a ton of fantasy scoring to receivers. Second most DraftKings and FanDuel points allowed per game to the position. So really a plus matchup for DGB. Going to be tiny ownership rate. I'm guessing around maybe under 5% this week. So if he goes out and plays well, you're getting it at a super low ownership and you're getting him at a super low salary. 5700 on FanDuel, 3800 on DraftKings. So there's a lot for, for me to like about DGB this week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's going to be a nice uh, deep sleeper for you here. Uh, that'll wrap, wrap things up for us for Week 17. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all the rest of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.